Nice. Welcome, welcome everybody. So nice to be here. It's our sixth day of gathering. It's Thursday, December 29th, 2022. And I'm your host, Verlyn McGilvray. And today our presenters are Signe Schaefer with the Contemplation and Mary Rood for Eurythmy. So if you have a candle, now would be the time to light it either physically or in your heart. It's creating a space uh, here, a sacred space for all of us as we bring this light into the world in our group. And I just invite you now to, to relax and sit back and really uh, put your focus on um, Signe Schaefer as she talks about the Madonna of the Goldfish Finch as a detail. Hello, everyone. Um, so yes, we're working here with the Madonna of the Goldfinch. The other day, after um, working with this image and all of the other wonderful images that we've been looking at these days, I woke up with the words see and wonder. And so that's how I've tried to approach this, to, to see what's there and to let myself wonder. And when I first look at it, I, I see the two boys and I, and I always ask, what was Raphael doing with these two boys? Um, I, I know enough of art history that art history will tell us that the boy on the left is this, the John the Baptist in his furs with his uh, little water carrier attached to his belt. Interestingly, there is no cross here. Usually he holds a cross. And I, and I totally appreciate the value of, of knowing that. And at the same time, I wonder about the number of paintings and this one so beautifully with two boys. That mystery has many levels for me. So in, in this one, the boy on the left is holding out a goldfinch in his hands to the other boy who, who reaches to touch it. And they are looking at each other in such an, um, a, a, in a way, it's a joyful look and a, and a very sweet look between them. The goldfinch is interesting because it's not the American goldfinch that we know that is the bright, bright yellow with black wings. This is a European goldfinch and it, it does have yellow on its wings, but it also has red on its head. And there's a legend that this, this tiny bird um, who is known in stories for its purity of heart, um, this tiny bird was trying to peck out the thorns in the, in the crown of thorns that the Christ was wearing on the way to Golgotha. And in that effort to, to, to peck out the thorns, some of the blood of Christ touched the little bird. And so these birds have red on their heads. So I have to wonder at the choice of this bird, um, knowing that that legend was, was around, as if there's a kind of premonition that's being offered and received between the boys of, of what is coming. If I go for a moment to the landscape, there's something there that is not in most of the landscapes. I looked through a lot of Raphael to see, and that on the left, there's a bridge. And a bridge also gives me a lot to wonder about. A bridge goes from one place to another, from one time to another, from here to there. It, it, it shows a transition as a possibility. Um, and water is flowing under this bridge and the water flows all the way over to the other side. And in a way it passes right through the, the heart region of the mother. There's also a town, there, there are many the trees and flowers and um, aspects of the landscape. 
excuse me, um, the mother, of course, is the central figure here. And she is gazing very gently and sweetly toward the boys, particularly toward the boy on the left. But she has a, a very intimate relationship with the boy on the right. He's between her knees and he's actually standing on her foot, which we don't see in the detail here. She has a book in her hand and the book is open and no one in the picture is looking at the book. Only we can see that the book is there, that she is holding it and she is holding it open toward us perhaps, but it's hard not to feel that that this mother is in some way the Madonna surely, but more than the Madonna. And that this book she holds is the book of wisdom, the wisdom of the world. And, and she in some way is, is a face of the Sophia being as the wisdom of the world. And she holds the book just toward the ear of the little Jesus child, as if somehow with some inner um, hearing, a different kind of hearing, he might be able to receive all of that wisdom that she is holding. And, and she, she knows what will come, the mystery, the miracle, the suffering and, and the gifts of what's going on between these two boys. It's all there in her book of wisdom. So I invite you to your own contemplation. Thank you, Signe, that was amazing. Let's take our time now to go into our own meditation and I'll call you back in five minutes.
I'd like to bring everyone back into this space. Thank you again, Signe, for such a special and gentle um, road into connection with that beautiful painting. Now I'd like to introduce Mary Rood to bring in our special Eurythmy time. Thank you, Bernard, Tess, Signe. So we know this a little bit now. So let's again think about the geometry. First we have standing up, our upright human being. So take a moment to stand up, feel the joy of your uprightness, grounding of your feet. And then we find this geometry, right? So our arms parallel to the earth. In our uprightness, we feel the freedom in our head and in our throat. Active is the right foot. Step with the right foot. I think speech. I mean, I sorry, I speak up to the throat. Passive left foot, just under the heart. I have spoken. Active right foot. I seek myself in the spirit. Left foot. I feel myself within myself. Right foot. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. Now, those of us who love history, the very beginning of Eurythmy, when it was not even a month old, Steiner gave this to the first Eurythmus as geometry, but they did it jumping. And because of the softness and delicacy of the image that Signe shared, I think we would like to give it a try because it was to bring levity, lightness, freshness into, into the rhythm gestures, which didn't even exist yet. So let's give it a try. You need not jump if you don't want to jump. If you want to jump, join me. It may not be exact, but what we're looking for is levity of soul and body. So we start in the first. Ready? Here we go. So now you probably feel if you did jump a little invigorated. So we'll do it our final time, slow, thoughtful, and with the words. I think speech. I speak. I have spoken. I seek myself in the spirit. I feel myself within myself. I am on the way to the spirit, to myself. Thank you. Thank you, Sing um, and Mary. That was beautiful. That jumping was very invigorating. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. What a wonderful time we've had today. I want to um, give you the opportunity to say goodbye and blow out your candle and many blessings on your day. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Happy New Goodbye. Year. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Blessed Thank Holy you. Nights. Beautiful Thank day. You. Blessed Wonderful. Holy Much gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Peter.